Hello my lovelies, how are we all doing today? Um, today we are going to do a um, watercolour lavender stem today. I thought that would be a nice um, little thing for us to do. Um, so, I haven't got anything else to say really, other than the fact that it's freezing in here. Um, so let's crack on. I am feeling a little underprepared for this. Um, I just had an empty space and I thought, all right, I'll film a tutorial. Um, so who knows what way this is going to go. And I haven't painted one of these for a long time. So let's just pray together that it goes well. Also, I have uh, the most ridiculous sleeves on for painting. I do not recommend wearing attire like this. Um, I'm likely to get covered in paint. Um, so I'm going to like hoik them up under my elbows and hope for the best. Let us continue. Right. Here is a little example for you. So you can see that what we're doing, again, we're not creating botanical art. We're not creating something that's exact. We're creating something that is creative and light and airy and feels like lavender uh, rather than a Zach replica. We've got cameras for exact replicas. We do not need to create exact replicas in paint. We can create whatever the hell we want. Um, so here we go. Here's a little example for you. Um, we also like, um, I do always like to do a little, um, a little sketch as well. I find it incredibly helpful whenever you are painting or creating to have lots of different types of reference in front of you, whether it be photographs that you've taken, um, little sketches you've done, um, practice that you've done. It's just great to have it all around you so that you've got something to kind of use when you get a little bit lost in your final piece and also it makes all of that a hell of a lot easier um so we've got our little pencil drawing just to kind of like keep our mind and eye in check we've got our example here i will pop a couple of photos and what have you some at some point around the screen for you to have a look at as well and obviously you can actually get them and look at them in real life what do we need for us painting um, lavender? First of all, obviously we need watercolour paper. This is just out of an A5 pad, the normal A5 pad that I use, and it is the Langton Daler and Rowley um, cold press 300 gram paper. Just super easy. We need some um, masking tape. We're gonna take this down today just to stop the um, paper from bubbling. We're not using huge amounts of water and this isn't proper official stretching. It is just putting our paper and keeping it flat. I'm doing that on a drawing board. These you can pick up from anywhere really, even any sort of MDF that you've got laying around, anything like that can be used as a drawing board. Um, and it's just something that you can take your paper to keep it nice and flat. You don't have to worry about it getting mucky off of various things on the table. So they're super easy and handy to have. All right, let me, let me finish doing this. There we go. So that is taped down nice and flat for us. Right, we're only going to use three colours today. Um, you can use them out of your pan. Like, let me, if I can open this, let me demonstrate that. Oh, lordy, look at the state of that pan. I should be ashamed, but I'm not. Um, so, yep, you can use them out of the pan or you can use them out of um, your tubes. I'm using tubes today, but anything that you've got handy. The colours that I am using, so I am using a Windsor Violet, and that is a Windsor and Newton um, watercolour pa paint. I am using an olive green. Again, that's Windsor and Newton. And I am using, now I'm going to embarrass myself now because I can't pronounce it right, Perline. I think, I don't know, green. Um, that again is a Windsor and Newton colour. Um, so I'm using them. If I show you, so then we can have a look on here. This is super handy to have and do, and I actually think it's a bit of a must. Um, watercolour paint, particularly, doesn't really, you can't really see the tones or the shades of it when it's in your pan or in your tube. Um, so I find that actually a really good point of reference for you to look at is to do a little swatch like this so you've got all the colours down so you can kind of see the tones in them. So this is our Windsor Violet there. You can see that that's a lovely lavender purple colour. Um, we are using our olive green there. So a nice natural earthy green. And then our Paraline, Paraline, pardon, what a blah, 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 green here. I will write it in the bio. Um, you can see there is a bit more of a, I want to say petroly green. Um, so we've got that there for us to use. 
Uh, we also need paint brushes. I've got like just a nice round one and then a slightly smaller one. We need our two, I'm gonna pop them here, but I've got a feeling it's shiny in a funny light there. So we need, oh, we will move them back. So we've got two pots of water, one for cleaning our brushes and one for mixing our paint. That is always a must. Um, anything else? Um, yes, a little bit of tissue just in case we get a bit of spillage or we use a bit too much water. Um, so is that everything? Yes, I believe it is. Let us begin. Oh, and I've just lost my paintbrush. Hold a oh, Hold the line. Oh, you can tell how disorganised I am today. Right. So let's have a look at our examples. Let's bring our example back in here. And our little drawing. Let's put that there like that. Let's hope that's in camera. Right, when we are painting or drawing, particularly flowers, I think, unless we are about creating an exact replica, what we're looking at is we're looking at, I suppose, like the signs or signifiers from that flower, that item, that subject in front of us that we can use that is instantly recognisable. So if we think about flat lavender, the first thing that we think of when we think of lavender is the colour. Um, so that's your first sign or signifier. Um, the second thing, lavender has a very distinct shape to it. It's not like your daisy shape or your daffodil shape or that traditional kind of flower bloom. It is a stem, isn't it? So those are the two things that you want to think about and recreate in your painting because you have that, that um, what should we call it? Like cylinder cone like shape you have that shape and then add in that color and instantly you don't have to do anything else other than that and instantly people will think lavender um, so it's about bearing those two things in mind the first thing I am going to do so I've got my paintbrush quite a big paintbrush and I'm going to wet it with our clean water I have already put my paint in the pan there and I'm just going to add some water we want it quite watery at this point always with the clean water so always wash the paint off your brush in your dirty water then pick up the water and put it back in it in um, to mix in your colours because if you start mixing your colours with dirty water you get dirty colours right so I've got a little bit of paint here right so I am thinking about composition wise we want our stem, the head of our stem, in the top third of our um, piece of paper. And because I'm only doing one, we will keep it in the centre for the purposes of this. Um, so while we're thinking about that shape, now, we don't want to draw paint just a blob. Lavender has got that, can I say, knobbly texture to it. If we have a look here, it's basically made up of tiny 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 petals which from a distance kind of look knobbly so we don't want to paint a big dark black purple oblong we want to kind of almost if you were wanting your hand to tell me what a lavender stem looked like that is what you are doing with your brush strokes there. Can you see? So we are creating a shape that is long and narrow. And we are basically what I'm doing, I'm going to do it on the back of here, is I am moving my hand about up and down, not filling in the space. We're not filling a space like this. We're trying to create that texture. So we're doing very, very lightly. Can you see there? Now, watercolour paint always dries lighter. So we're going to add a little bit more on. I would recommend you, particularly if this is your first time um, doing this, is go light. You can always add more on. If you go dark, you can't take it away. And also what I would suggest is doing several all at once so you can kind of get a feel for it. I speak a lot about art being about feel. It's very difficult, which is one of the reasons that art is so difficult. It's very difficult because there is no beginning or end point of it. It's not like if you at two plus two equals four. Um, sometimes in art, two plus two equals 10. Um, 
sometimes things work really well and sometimes they don't. And a lot of that, I make mistakes all the time. I do this a lot and I paint things like this and sometimes it goes really well and sometimes it goes really, really wrong. The more you do it, the easier it becomes to guarantee a right outcome. That doesn't still mean that you don't get things wrong, it just becomes easier. So as you can see, it's already, because we haven't used huge amounts of water, um, it's already starting to lighten up a bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more here and there. Not all over, because again, we wanna kind of create that texture. So with just, watercolour paint likes to lay flat um, it kind of fills the space and flattens out it's not like acrylic where you can get those um the texture within the paint you can't get that with watercolour paint because it just lays flat on your surface so we have to use little tricks and tips to do it right so i'm going to leave that like that is at the moment i'm going to wash my brush off now obviously that is not particularly pleasing at the moment because we've kind of got this like a blobby appearance to it um, also, what is important to note that at um, this point, you might have something that looks completely different from this. Like you can, with watercolour, you can do these things a million times over um, and get different results every time, which is amazing and wonderful, but also can sometimes make our life really tricky. Now, I have lost my smaller paintbrush because it fell on the floor. Hold a second. There we go. Woohoo! Oh, I'm so professional. Right, on the smaller paintbrush, so you can see, we've got quite a um, tight brush there, which is good. We want a bit of direct directness to it. So I'm just gonna load that paintbrush up with water and I just want to push it into that paint. Now, can you see there, I'm not painting I'm pushing it into the paint. And actually what I'm doing here is I'm actually picking up some of that paint off the surface. I'm not putting it down, I'm picking some of it off. So now you'll see I've got paint on my finger. So I'm gonna wash that off because if we, if we just keep moving that paint around, it is just gonna become a big giant purple mess. So again, I wash it off, I pick up clean water. Now the clean water is what helps suck the watercolor paint up. So all of these sort of hard edges, I am just picking up. And again, this is where our tissue will come into play. I occasionally use fingers when I don't have tissue. So now I am just softening out those edges. Can you see that? There we go. So we've got we've got difference of tone within that. So we've got light and dark um, of the purple. It's really really simple. It's it's really simple, but it takes practice to kind of get the feel of it. And I've used hardly any paint at this point. There we go. Now, again, if there are any areas where you find that the paint is sticking a little bit and it looks a bit harsh because again, we want to keep this soft. If we look at our little example here, we want to keep it soft and light. Um, so any areas, like if we look here where it, it feels just a bit tight, clean your brush off, water, just circulate. You see how I'm just circulating? And what it's actually doing is lifting some of the paint off so it's just softened that out a little bit. So here, let's just soften those edges a bit. That is the great thing about watercolour paint compared to say your acrylic paint. Acrylic paint, once it's dried, it's dried. Like there's no moving it, it is what it is. It is opaque, which means that you can paint directly over the top of it. Um, whereas watercolour paint is translucent, so you can see through it. So you have to be a bit more careful from that. But with watercolour paint, you can reactivate it. It's why we can leave our paints in the pan. Um, so when you get some of these lines that you don't like, even though they're dry, using a harder bristled brush, br blah, 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 put my teeth back in, using a harder bristled brush and water, you can just soften out those edges. Look at that, see? And push that paint around a bit. Now, I'm just going to start this idea of the stem coming down from the centre there. 
quick, quick movements. Right, well, we know this, the stem isn't purple. So now I am gonna try, attempt, I should say. No, I'm gonna succeed in a little trick. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Right, what I'm gonna do is, so I'm picking up my large brush again, washing any paint off of it, making sure that there's no purple residue in there. And I am going to pop, this is, I've just applied water to my paintbrush here, and I'm just going to apply water to the surface here. So now we're sort of edging towards a more wet on wet technique. Now I haven't put huge amounts of water down, I'm just moistening, I know people don't like that word, the surface. And then what I'm going to do, I should put a little bit more down here, there we go. So I've covered quite a considerably large area there, not saturated, um, but enough. And I'm going to try and find where have I put my um, green paint. Here we go. So I'm going to pick up my olive green first of all. So again, wash my paintbrush off, just make sure it's clean. Clean water. Start with a small amount. I'm just picking up my olive green paint here. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. And I'm just going to start blotting that in. I'm just kind of creating surface, background, loosely. I don't want to add too much at this point. We can be super, super messy. And this will, again, will dry lighter. Off. Now this I'm hope, is the bit that I'm hoping that is going to work. So my paper. So this is just a scrap bit of paper with my um, practice run on like that. So we've got the edge of this here. Let's hope this works. You need quite thick paper because you need it to be able to absorb the um, paint. So I'm just running water along the side of that card there. Now I'm going to pick up my Praline, pre-lean green. So here it is in my pan here. And I'm picking it up, quite watery at this point. And I'm going to paint it. Oh, that is far too watery. There we go. So I'm going to paint it. Can you see along the ridge there? Now I need quite a lot of paint on it. So I need it loose, i.e. fairly watery, but I need a, quite a lot of it on there. Can you see? So we've got quite a decent amount there. Now, let's get rid of it. Let's hope that this works. I've done it many times before and it has worked. So, I actually think this card is too wide. But... Right, I'm going with it, I'm going with it. Right, so I am going to line it up with the bottom of the stem there and just push it down like that and lift it up. There we go. Right, now, obviously, you can see we've got bleed, which is kind of what we want at this point because we're trying to keep everything soft and airy and light. Remember, I think, if you've watched some of my other tutorials, you'll see where I, I have spoken about before how I always want things to look like they come from nowhere and disappear into nowhere as well. I don't want kind of harsh, deliberate lines. And so what we... Um, what I'm doing is creating that depth of the stem without actually painting the stem in at this point. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So you can kind of see these sort of marks here. And the reason that I use the card here is it is sometimes we need to take away our most obvious tools to make something look um, looser. It's very easy when we've got our hands to kind of go back to that traditional thing, the first thing that we kind of learnt to use, which is a pencil. Um, if we use something like card, um, our fingers, for instance, tissue paper, it takes that kind of directness away so we can get a much softer appearance. And all I'm doing at this point is creating the depth in there for what will eventually become a bit more substantial and a bit 
more stem like so while we're waiting for that to um to dry look see this is one of the things that i absolutely love about watercolor paint this mark here which is up which has come from our wet on wet which is putting the water on the paper and then putting the paint in the water these little bleed marks you could not get them if you tried you could not paint them they are completely a natural phenomenon in wet or wet paper a uh, wet or wet painting right i'm just gonna soften out some of those edges a bit just so again we don't want it we want it to kind of you know like bedhead bed, bedhead bed hair you know like where you see those styles that are like somebody's just got out of bed but it looks like perfection that's kind of what we're aiming for right and then i'm just going to just for a little bit of fun again kind of giving it a bit of texture a bit of looseness i am picking up my purple paint here and i'm just gonna flick a little bit not too much just a bit and then clean my paint off and then i'm going to pick up my my darker green so it's my um Radium green. Again, you can use any greens or purples that you've got. I'm just going to put a bit around that base there. Again, this is a great way of adding paint to something without being an actual brush stroke. Can you see how we're starting to get depth at the bottom there? Um, if we start like kind of painting like that, we kind of lose that idea of like, oh look, it's lavender stem that's just emerged from watercolour paint. Isn't this marvellous? A bit more. Okay, now let me feel that paint. Paper, right. We're always slightly gauging how the wetter the paper is, the less control we have over the paint. Um, so quite often when it comes to watercolour painting, you have to work quite slowly um, and a little bit methodically. This is You can tell that this is damp because you see how it is got the wave to it where the, um, the paper has started stretching and buckling a little bit. But it's it's not saturated. So I think I can probably get away with this but we'll see if not we'll just have to we'll leave it and um i'll come back in 10 minutes and do it right so i'm going to start attempting to do the stem this isn't the best paintbrush for it this could go horribly wrong right always with thin lines so i'm following oh dear that's terrible so i'm following that line that the where i'd originally put that depth in now what i'm going to do oh no i've used the wrong water see we all make mistakes right i'm going to attempt it's all right it's not too bad right what i'm going to do is i'm going to wet this again so i've put the paint in directly i'm going to wet this again i have no idea how this is looking on screen this could be absolutely blimmin terrible right i'm going to wet this again and i'm going to pop it along our line and that is just introducing a little bit of um water to our line lift it up well it didn't do what i expected it to do hey ho we fight on we fight on right so what i'm doing best thing about watercolour paint is that you can always get blend it out look there we go just dragging that down there now what we're actually going to do So a lot of watercolour painting is kind of like doing stuff on the fly. I know that sounds like that I am making that up to suit um, my needs right now because the stem didn't go quite as to plan. But honestly, this is what watercolour painting is. 
it sometimes behaves, sometimes it doesn't. Right, that is where we're at at the moment. So we've got like quite a nice base going on here. It hasn't kind of all tied together at this point. Right, I had a bit of a reprieve. Blah, 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 blah. Teeth back in Steph, a reprieve, um, because my camera ran out of memory space, so I had to kind of like, you know, delete stuff that I didn't need anymore. Um, and what that actually let me do is allow my um, piece of work to dry. Um, if you ever find that something isn't quite going to plan, the best thing to do is to just step away from it and leave it. We have a temptation to kind of like try and fix it and try and get in there. Um, and actually quite often what ends up happening is it ends up getting overworked, you end up getting frustrated and you end up feeling like you failed and we don't want that. Um, so just step away, make yourself a cup of tea, eat a biscuit and then come back to it. We were left with a stem that hadn't quite gone to plan. Um, that may or may not have happened to yours on at home um, and by allowing it by washing it out with water and allowing it to dry we actually been left with something that's reasonably pleasing we don't really have a stem but we have an idea of a stem by using that darker green through the middle it's created that bit of depth and that idea that there is a stem there but I want to make it a little bit firmer um, so I've picked up this brush here. It is a Dayla and Rowney uh, liner. So you can see it has a very, very fine um, brush on it. It's also a little bit longer than your normal. So it just allows a little bit of kind of like loose, fine action with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it off to make sure it's clean. Pick up your clear water. Go to our paint. Now... I'm going to practice, you can see where I've been practicing. So can you see, needs a little bit of more water on that. Can you see where you're getting it ca catching a little bit? So I'm going to make it a little bit wetter. And then, see, perfecto. Right, so I'm going to pick up some paint. Now, from our point there where we've got it a little bit blended, I'm just going to firm that. And now I've just picked up water, not paint, and and I am blending one side of it, just one side of it, and I am taking the paintbrush. I know it's really fine, so I don't know whether you can pick it up on the camera. I am taking the paintbrush to the paint. I'm not going directly into the paint and blending out. I am taking the wet paintbrush to the the paint so you can see what that does is that blends out one side of it you see but we're left with the firmer side there and then I'm going to blend down and I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint just wash it down a bit now as we get to the bottom we can get looser and looser and looser and what we want to do is we want it to blend into what we've got down here that we've already kind of prepped so again, I've picked up just clean water and I am bringing it to the paint. So our stem gets almost looser the closer it gets to the bottom. Any of the hard edges, we are just washing out. See, look how this is all coming together now. See how even when things don't quite go to plan, you can work it out in the end. So you see how we've got quite a solid line on the left hand side the outside of it should we call it and then a softer line on the inside and it just creates this stem that's there but not quite there now what we want to do is we want to make this area a little bit darker so i'm going to pick up my bigger paintbrush again so i've got clean water on here and i'm going to pick up my paint i want fairly a amount there and obviously that is not a pleasing mark there but I, what I'm doing here is what I call like paint loading. So I'm just loading paint down at the base, which is where we want it to create depth. I'm then going to wash any excess paint off my paintbrush. So I am left with a clean paintbrush and I'm going to pick up clean water and you want it sort of reasonably wet, but not loads. And then I am bringing my paintbrush to the paint. See like that? 
So I'm bringing my paintbrush to the paint. I'm not going into the paint and dragging out. I'm putting my paintbrush on the outside and bring it in. Let me show you that again. Keen paintbrush with water, starting from the outside and bringing it to the paint. Outside to the paint. Any point that you feel like you've got too much paint on your paintbrush, wash it off and begin again. To the paint. Like that, see? Now, we've still got quite a small amount in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm pushing now the paint into that water that's around the outside of it. So what my hands do is almost like little like circles. And then washing it off, picking up clean water again and bringing it to those hard edges. Any of those hard edges, just bring the water to it. There we go. You can also, the other thing you can also do is if you feel like you've got a bit too much water on there, is you can actually dab it like that. So you can, as well as blending with our paintbrush, we can dab with a tissue. Like, look at that. That's much, much, much better. Look how lush that looks. And then final little touch, just to kind of create a little bit more base in there, make, make it look like it belongs. Just a bit more kind of like flickage. If you have several of these on the go, you can get really experimental because it doesn't really matter. Some of them will go right, some of them will go wrong. There we go. And I'm just, I just, for my own eyes, I just want to blend. Actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do there. I'm going to pick up our olive green and just add a bit of olive green in there just to... Just create a little bit more depth and texture. Just an up, there we go. And then any excess water, dab it out. See that how there's just that little bit of different tone through there. There we go, I think I've just flicked paint on my face. Right. Am I pleased with that? Fairly pleased, I think. Um, yeah, fairly pleased. Thanks for tuning in again, guys. Um, I hope you've got on well with it. Let me know how you've got on. I mean, they make great presents for people. Send me some pictures of what you've done. Send me any questions that you've got. Um, like, follow and subscribe as always and um, I look forward to seeing how you got on. Bye!